Go ahead. Thank you. Today is Thursday, the 12th of November, 2020. This is a WebEx meeting um, that is held to uh, serve as the appeal hearing for uh, two appeals that are on the agenda. And they are both from the same appellant, um, Reagan Outdoor Advertising, related to two properties, one at 1049 or 1051 South 300 West. There seems to be a little confusion about that. And the other at 1650 South State Street. So it appears that the parties are the same in both of these uh, appeals. This is a public meeting, it's being recorded. Um, my name is Craig Call. I'm a hearing officer, one of those who serves to uh, handle land use appeals in Salt Lake City. And it is a uh, public hearing as well. If members of the public do show up, I noted that a web link was uh, circulated for the public to use as well. So there will be time for public comment if there is any. Um, I have no information about this matter at all, except for a number of documents that have been sent to me via email. And I, I don't remember that those emails included the appellant as a party receiving the emails. Um, but first, let's do introduction. Who's here on behalf of the appellant? <clears throat> uh, Josh Peterman. Okay. And will anyone else uh, be speaking? No. Okay. And who's here on behalf of the city? Samantha Slock. And you're, you're with the city attorney's office? I am, yes. Okay. So, also from the city is Mayara Lima, who prepared um, the overall staff report. Um, she's in attendance as well. Okay. And speaking was Joel Patterson. Yes. Okay. Well, um, since the appellant bears the burden, let's have Mr. Uh, Peterman, go ahead and start us out and explain a few things to me because I'm not sure I fully understand this and I'm looking forward to be fully informed. Mr. Peterman. Um, thank you. I just want to confirm first off, have you received um, uh, the revised appellant's brief for purposes of today? I believe That's, so. Okay. It's not dated, um, <clears throat> nor does it say revised, but there was one attached to the staff report and another one that I received separately um, for each of these appeals. And at the top, it says reasons for appeal. Is That's that correct. Yes. Brief? It would be it's, the second one to come in. Yeah, um, and it's about 11 pages with color exhibits and such. That's okay. correct. By the way, if, if I look on uh, because I keep staring at the sky, it's because I have a very large monitor behind my laptop. The laptop has a camera, the monitor doesn't. So I'm not staring off into space. I'm looking at you in larger version. Thank you. Um, sure. Just as a matter of housekeeping tonight, uh, there's two appeals. There's one with regard to building permit number 2020-02188. That's the one we'll be addressing tonight. The second appeal, 02189, um, there's, there's been an, an issue with the property owner. So for purposes of tonight, um, that appeal, I, I suppose, would be rendered moot. So, so that would not be- So think 50 South. No, the one on 300 West. <laughs> okay. So the one on 300 West is the one that's rendered moot and you will that's not correct. be- That's correct. That's correct. Okay. They're, the, right. they're virtually identical facts and same legal issues, but the right. reason to take twice as much time if we don't need to. Sure, we don't have to worry about what the real address is. So I like that, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, just to give um, you a little bit of background, the facts of this matter are very straightforward. Um, and, and they are as follows, that my client Reagan has an existing billboard on 1700 South. 
with an east west orientation and we've applied the building permit that's been submitted application is to construct a new billboard <clears throat> um, at 1650 south state street with a north south orientation and that's really the facts of this matter uh then what happened is that the city denied the permit application, as we pointed out in our appeal, uh, based on the spacing requirements of Salt Lake City Ordinance 21A 46160T. And what this ordinance provides is that billboards with an advertising face of 300 square feet or less in size shall not be located closer than 300 linear feet from any other small billboard or 800 feet from any large or from a large billboard on the same side of the street. <clears throat> and if you look at the, the parties briefs, um, the parties appear to be in agreement that the controlling issue in this appeal is what does this the phrase quote same side of the street unquote mean. And our position is that the plain language of this ordinance means signs on the same side of the street as that phrase is commonly and ordinarily used in our language, which is a rule of statutory interpretation. Could I interrupt and just ask a yes. quick clarification? Absolutely. What size is the is the existing billboard large or small? So I was going to get to that, but I'm, we can address it now. So the existing billboard is considered a large billboard. All right. The billboard being constructed will be a small billboard. All right. Sorry, if you were going to get to it, I apologize. No, and that's and I appreciate you bringing that up because that's a critical distinction um, for purposes of today. So, the first and most important thing to to point out, and I apologize if I get redundant on this point, but it's the, I think it's the same, it's the controlling issue is these signs are not on the same street, therefore they cannot be on the same side of the street. One of them is on seventeen hundred South, and one of them will be on State Street. And nowhere in the in the city's ordinances is there a spacing prohibition based strictly on a linear measurement as the city advances. Instead, it reads, and this is where what we just talked about, and this is important. It, re, it it talks about a linear measurement when you're dealing with two small billboards. It says 300 square feet or less in size shall not be located less than 300 linear feet from any other small billboard. But when you're talking about a small billboard versus a large billboard, that term linear is removed. It simply, it says 800 feet from a large billboard on the same side of the street. It doesn't say 800 linear feet, and that's important. What the city's trying to say is that it's strictly a linear measurement. And we've given you several anecdotal examples of how classifying these two signs as being on the same side of the street under this ordinance would be uh, a frustrated and uncommon usage of this phrase. For example, we pointed out that the city county building, um, we have two examples for you that the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the city county building is on, is east of State Street and Liberty Park is east of State Street. Mm -hmm. But nobody would ever, in their ordinary and common use of the phrase, same side of the street, ever say that they're both on the same side of the street. And the other one that may be more familiar to people uh, who went to the University of Utah is that Big Ed's is around the corner from the Pie Pizzeria. They're on different streets. They're both um, on the same side, geograph geographically positioned of 200 South, but they're not on the same side of the street. I have neighbors that live around the corner from me. We're both on the same side of 300 West, but we don't live on the same side of the street. And to, and to, 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 to say that a billboard on 1700 South and a billboard on State Street are on the same side of the street simply because they both might be North of 1700 South is just a frustrated use of that phrase. And further re reinforcing, reinforcing this interpretation is the fact that billboards by definition in state and city or in uh, state and city city ordinances um, are designed to attract attention based on their orientation. And we pointed this out in our brief. This is 21A 46160B. By definition, 
A billboard is a freestanding ground sign located on industrial, commercial, residential property. Here's the important part. If the sign is designed or intended to direct attention to a business product or service that is no, not sold, offered, or existing on the property where the sign is located. So therefore, the orientation of a sign is intrinsic to its value, both to the owner of the sign and, and the companies who advertise on it. A sign on 1700 South with an orientation is not intended to direct attention to it from traffic going north and south on State Street. Moreover, a sign on State Street oriented north and south is not intended to direct the attention of traffic going east and west on 1700 South. And what the city's interpretation does is reads that phrase, same side of the street out of the equation. Again, they're simply advocating for a linear measurement, which is not in the ordinance. Um, and so our position is, is that the, the space requirement applies to billboards on the same side of the street, which these are not because again, and I apologize for being redundant, they're not on the same street. Therefore, they're not on the same side of the street. These billboards are oriented to entirely different streets and under definition, um, as the city has defined them, uh, the, these billboards are, are oriented in a way to direct attention on the streets that they're positioned on. And that's important to this as well. Mm -hmm. So when you take these two things together, the only logical interpretation, the only reasonable interpretations of statute or the ordinance, I apologize, is that it applies to, if we were building another billboard on the north side of 1700 South, where this existing billboard is. So what the city has argued mm -hmm. is that the city argues that this ordinance should be read in a way to prohibit any sign within a certain distance of 1700 South. In the city's brief, they argue to the west side of State Street, but I just wanna point out a couple issues with the city's brief. Throughout its brief, the city argues that the, that, that the 300 foot spacing applies, which is not correct. We're talking about the 800 foot spacing because we're dealing with a large sign and a small sign. The 300 foot spacing requirement applies when you're dealing with a small sign versus a small sign. Moreover, the city argues that the ordinance as they interpret it would prohibit any other sign located to the west of State Street. Um, that's incorrect as well. The existing sign is on 1700 South. So if you're going to accept the city's interpretation of this, the argument would have to be that the ordinance would prevent any other sign north of 1700 South, as opposed to west of State Street, because there's nothing on State Street right now. So we have to assume that the new sign cannot be located on the same side of the street as the existing sign. Um, and again, this interpretation reads the phrase same side of the street out of the ordinance. They're simply asking for a linear measurement from anything else north of 1700 South. And I think at this point, it would it would be helpful for me to, sh to share my screen and just and show you um, on a map just how frustrated and it's just an unsustainable interpretation that the city is advancing. So I'm going to share my screen here. If bear with me. Can we see that? Can everybody see that? It's a uh, Google Maps. Yes. Okay. So what we're looking at here is um, this location is where the is where the existing sign is. This is State Street going north and south. This is 1700 South going east and west. This right here is the existing sign. the The proposed sign is here, north and south on State Street with a north south orientation. The city is arguing that the intent of the statute is to prevent clusters of billboards. And so the city's saying that. You can't put a sign anywhere within 800 feet north of 1700 South. But if we take that to its logical conclusion, it would permit a sign right here directly across the street. It would permit a sign right here on this corner of State Street. Ours is going here. It can't go there. But under the city's interpretation, it could go right here. It could go here on any here on State Street. It could go on 1700 South here. So we see that their their interpretation doesn't advance this alleged purpose of the statute. But what would it prevent? Well, if we measure a distance from here, we're, we're talking about uh, 800 feet. The way the city's asking the, you to interpret this is it would prevent putting a sign clear. Oh, further than that, that's only 500 feet. 
uh, over here by the U.S. Bank building. So if we move this down a little bit, here we're within 800 feet. So this corner is 789 feet from where the existing sign is. So under the city's interpretation, it would also prevent a sign that's almost two blocks to the west and more than a block north. These, the, all this building and all this structure is in between these signs. So the city's saying that we have to read this in a way to, because we don't want clusters of signs that are visible more than one at a time. That's just not achievable under their interpretation. What the ordinance says is we're not allowed to build a sign anywhere else within 800 feet on the same side of 1700 South. And I, it, does that make sense that, in, in other words, under the city's interpretation, if we if we clear this measurement, and we go from here to let's say, just catty corner to the south side of 1700 South, we're 200 feet away, that would be permissible under the city's interpretation. But if that's the case, that's not consistent with their argument that you have to interpret this in a way to avoid clusters of signs. We have signs that are on two different streets, they're oriented in two different ways. And uh, in summary, again, I'm getting back to the redundancy, they're not on the same side of the street because they're not on the same street. I also think it's important to make two more points. Um, the first of which is that the city's current interpretation is not consistent with its prior interpretation of the statute. And it's arbitrary and capricious because of that. If you, if you look at <clears throat> attachment uh, e, attachment E to um, our revised brief shows, actually attachments D and E. Attachment D shows, I'll wait for a minute until you get there. Okay. After this ordinance was enacted, and the city issued two permits. This is California Avenue and Redwood and Redwood Road. These are on the same parcel. One has California Road frontage. The other one has Redwood Road front frontage. They're 343 linear feet from each other. The city permitted these. And if we go down to Exhibit E, which is the actual permit the city issued, you'll know it says two billboards on this lot. This sign has California Avenue frontage. <clears throat> so applying the same ordinance that was in effect, that's in effect now, the city determined that it met the spacing requirements because they have different orientations. They have frontage on different streets. And so rather than belabor a point, these points, um, I think, I think my, our argument is clear <clears throat> that two signs on two different streets cannot be on the same side of the street under the plain language of this ordinance. So unless you have any questions, um, I have nothing further at this time. I do have questions, but let me invite and start to go ahead and speak, and then we'll um, see if there's public comment and then have a conversation. So I may want to share a couple of um, pictures and stuff with my screen. So does something need to be done to, oh, no, it looks like I've got the ball. So um, I guess to start with, just as uh, Mr. Peterman did, just a matter of housekeeping with regard to the 300 West um, billboard. Um, I'm not entirely sure what um, Reagan's position is with regard to that, but the city's position is that the appeal should be dismissed. Um, the city received today unsolicited from the property owner an email um, directed to Mayor Lima informing the city that the property owner wasn't going to enter into an agreement with Reagan and wasn't going to allow them on the property since a land application has to be filed by the owner of the property or somebody with a representative, so somebody with permission. It would render the appeal moot, um, it would render the application invalid and then the appeal moot. Um, that email um, from the property owner um, to the city was included in the package of information forwarded to um, the hearing officer today. So the city's position would be to dismiss the appeal and um, if Reagan somehow has, you know, manages to negotiate a, another deal with this particular property owner or something at a later date, they can refile an application then. Um, Josh, I don't know if you want to respond just to what Reagan's position is at this point or whether I should just continue with the, uh, the, the 1650. 
Um, I mean, we're in agreement that th that appeal can be dismissed. I don't, I don't want to get into the merits of it. I don't think they're entirely accurate, but I don't think it's relevant for purposes of today. Okay, unless the hearing officer has um, any questions with respect to that, I should proceed with the appeal um, with respect to the 1650 South State Street. So, sort of three general points I'm going to address. And the first is obviously the statutory construction argument. Um, the second is that um, Reagan's appeal brief uh, relied quite heavily on the California case, which is readily distinguishable on a lot of grounds. So, I'll address that kind of as my second point. Um, and third, um, there really is no evidence of any inconsistent decision from 1999 or 2000. And I'm just going to walk through the, the city's records with respect to those permits to demonstrate that. Um, but before we start, I was wondering if it would, I'm thinking it might be helpful just to share my screen briefly. Hopefully this will be successful. And just show you a couple of pictures of the location, because sometimes pictures uh, speak a thousand words. So. <clears throat> So hopefully you can see on your screens a pictures of Arby's. Here's the existing sign um, on the Arby's property that we're talking so much about. And this is the location that um, Reagan wishes to move its sign to right here. Um, here's another sort of picture of it. Um, let me see if I can go to. And just for information purposes, um, what Reagan is requesting to do in this case is to take down a sign that they already uh, that is currently in existence. So it's this sign down here that I'm kind of drawing my cursor around, and then move it down so it's here again move it down the street um, to this location here at Arby's. Um, and I just know that, you know, if the hearing officer can just note for the moment that there's a billboard here as well, I'm going to return to that point um, slightly later here. <clears throat> so hopefully that kind of orientates like from the street view what we're looking at and where the new billboard um, potentially, potentially wants to go. So this is obvious from the, you know, the city's briefing on this. And the city contends that the term same side of the street means any billboard that is located, that is located geographically. So the same side in relation to the street you're moving to. So here we're talking about to the west of State Street, anything to the west of State Street would sort of dictate the orientation or the, the linear measurements. Um, and we contend that this interpretation is in fact consistent with the plain language of the ordinance and its purpose, and it gives effect to the notable omissions in the ordinance and avoids some absurd results. So obviously those are a bunch of statutory construction um, rules that apply. I'll talk through each of them a little bit more slowly. So the first one with regard to plain language, uh, the hearing officer will note that the ordinance reads on the same side of the street. It doesn't read the same side of the same street. You might think I'm being pedantic here, but the hearing officer may have noticed it had opportunity to read the California case that Reagan is relying on heavily um, as saying that their position is correct. The ordinance in that case, the California city prohibited billboards on the same side of the same street. And so those words of the same street are notably incredibly absent from the city's ordinance. And as the hearing officer, I'm sure, is very aware, um, emissions in statutes, ordinances are supposed to be, that must be given effect. And obviously the omission of, of, the, same, of the same street needs to be given effect here. Um, I think that argument also addresses an argument that has been raised quite frequently by Reagan in its briefing that the city's interpretation would render the term on the same side of the street superfluous. Um, well, of course it wouldn't because on the same side of the street gives, gives you an, an idea of which side you're measuring from, whether that's going to be west of State Street, east of State Street, or it's a north-south oriented street, are you measuring north or are you measuring south? <clears throat> As the hearing officer is likely aware, um, 
The stated purpose of the ordinance is to promote the enhancement of the city's gateways, views, and vistas. And vistas. So obviously, having a bunch of billboards in a group together, like I just showed you on that picture, you have one on the Arby's, but at the back of the Arby's lot, one on the side of the Arby's lot, one down by the tattoo parlor. That's clearly not contributing. It's kind of contrary to the purpose of the statute, which is to um, enhance the city's gateways, views, and vistas. Um, if we interpret the ordinance as um, Reagan wishes us to interpret the ordinance, you'd get this absurd result where you could allow this cluster of billboards in this circumstance. You could also get a circumstance where you could have billboards up and down the street that had lots of just little little side streets, just you know, 100 feet apart. And then you'd argue that the billboard had a different street address because it was 20 feet down this kind of little alley street that had a different name. So um, that would be why um, the purpose of the ordinance is enhanced by interpreting it in the way the city um, is doing so. Um, <clears throat> I think it's notable that um, arguments have been made that the um, orientation of the billboard is important to whether the lineal feet applies. I think, again, this is a glaring absence um, from the city's ordinance. There's nothing in the ordinance that limits the spacing requirements to the orientation of the billboard, um, whether it's facing you know, north, south, east, west. And I think that this omission is actually particularly notable because um, the state law spacing provisions do limit their spacing provisions, and they limit them based on whether the billboards can be concurrently viewed, can be viewed at the same time. They say billboards can't be within 500 feet of each other um, you know, a, a adjacent to an interstate uh, freeway or highway, um, unless they can't be concurrently viewed. So clearly there are ways to accommodate like the idea of orientation, which have been done in state law, and it hasn't been done in the city's ordinance. So again, where emissions need to be considered purposeful and given the appropriate effect. Therefore, we don't, we don't have an orientation limitation on our spacing requirements. I think this is also sort of a glaring absence or a sort of um, sometimes they say the silence is deafening. The city pointed out in its um, briefing, how else do you describe, um, well, let me, let me put it this way. <clears throat> Many times um, in, in both the Reagan's brief and in their amended brief, they said, well, if the city intended it to be within um, 300 or 800 linear feet of the, um, of, of, you know, in any di direction to the east, it could have just said so. But the response is, well, well, how do you say that? Because streets are orientated east and west, they're orientated north and south, or southeast and southwest. So let's take our example. How could you write any other way that you're prohibiting billboards within 300 or 800 linear feet of billboards that are to the west of um, State Street? You can't write any billboard to the west because not all streets are oriented to the east and the, or oriented north-south. You can't write, you know, that doesn't accommodate a east-west street where you'd have to say all billboards to the north of the street or all billboards to the south of the street. Um, I think what is um, incredibly notable is that there is no suggestion of how to possibly write the city's intent in any other way. <clears throat> um, I don't know if the um, hearing officers had the opportunity to review the California case that has been cited in um, Reagan's um, briefing. I'm happy to um, provide a small overview of that to give some orientation to the distinctions that I'm about to draw between our circumstance and that ordinance. So, but I won't waste, I won't waste the hearing officer's time if you're already familiar with the case. I didn't read the case. I read the quotes and I read your description of how it was distinguished by the current situation. Yeah. So you probably don't need to know too much. It's, it is um, in, in a lot of respects, a very similar circumstance as the case that concerns the corner lot and the billboards that uh, would be both on the same corner lot of an orientation. I think the two incredibly distinguishing factors, in addition to the fact that obviously it's a California case and not binding Utah, but I think that 
more notable is the fact that the California um, city chose to use the language on the same side of the same street. I think the other thing which is incredibly notable about that case is that the ordinance had a specific provision for spacing requirements at four-way intersections, which these billboards met and it wasn't an issue. So, of course, they had um, a much more specific provision, which is not an issue in this case. And then they also had this four-way intersection provision that they met. So, I think those um, two things are sort of the most notable. Um, and as the hearing officer probably noted, there were additional um, distinctions um, that were drawn. So, <clears throat> turning to the city, to the third point that has been raised, um, there's been this statement that the city is taking an inconsistent position from a permit that it granted um, 20 years ago in the year 2000. I think it's notable that um, Reagan has had to go back 20 years to find um, what it is claiming as an example of an inconsistent position. <clears throat> but let's, um, so these are some of the documents which we shared with the um, hearing officer today. Um, we only received uh, the arguments in this regard late last week, so we were scrambling a little to find out what this uh, permit situation was about in a submitted phase. So I guess um, I'm just going to go ahead and to start with, this is an aerial view um, of the area in 1999. Um, we're talking about this sort of Redwood Road and uh, California Avenue um, area, and there's no billboards um, in the area at the time. So um, Reagan has provided a couple of documents that say that they received um, a permit in on December 1st, 2000, that allowed their billboard, that allowed a billboard within um, 340 feet of an existing billboard. So we went back to look at the history. I'm just going to walk you through it just briefly. So it starts in uh, September 15th of 1999. And as you'll see, these first two um, permits are issued. This first one um, has got this issue date up here of 9 15 1999. And then this second one is 9-15-1999. So this first one says new billboard construction with same street frontage on Redwood, two billboards on same lot. Importantly up here, this permit was voided and importantly this date is September 15, 1999. <clears throat> so let's look down at this next permit, um, which says, Billboard sign new construction permit number to be voided at applicant's request in order to meet the spacing for this location. Two billboards on this lot, this line, this sign has California Avenue frontage. Um, so essentially, this billboard, this permit application requesting the two billboards on Redwood Road was voided to allow this billboard on California Avenue um, to be put in place in. September 15th of 1999. <clears throat> so it seems like we've got a consistent position at this point. We can't have both these applications because it would violate the spacing provisions. Now we wonder what this subsequent application 15 months later or this subsequent permit 15 months later is. And to be honest, we're looking at 20 years ago, so of course um, records get um, destroyed over time with um, you know, retention policies, et cetera. So what do we have here? We've got this permit and it says new bill board construction, yeah, issue date 12-1-2000. So we don't know what's being requested. We don't know how many billboards were being requested in that. We don't know if it was a small one. We don't know if it was two billboards. Um, and notably, Reagan hasn't submitted the permit um, that was issued to say what the, what the phases were or what it was that was allowed. I think it's also interesting to note that this application says it's active up here. And what that means is that um, the applicant has never called the city for an inspection 
to confirm that whatever they requested is in line with what they were granting. Um, so we tried to do a little bit more looking to see what we could find, um, to see what was out there and what had actually, you know, if what was built was in line. The best we could find was that um, an aerial photo from May 2002, um, which still shows no billboards here um, on the property in this area where these two billboards are. So <clears throat> really, in conclusion, all that you can surmise from the documents that have been submitted are that in September 15, 1999, the city took the same position with regard to spacing of billboards and said, you have to avoid this other application so that we can grant your California, the Redwood Road application so we can grant your California Avenue application. It's frankly not sufficient documentation to understand what on earth happened with regard to um, the other permitting. And there's some real questions about uh, what was requested and um, whether it was in line with what was requested and it's never was never inspected to see if it was in line with that. And finally, before I conclude, um, I would just like to um, return to a point that I was making earlier. Even if the hearing officer um, remove, uh, uh, reverses the city's um, position here, um, the city is still going to have to deny this application because as you notice, um, the billboard is going to go in here and there is another billboard here, which I don't think anybody is going to dispute, but that's on the same side of State Street. Um, and these are within the documents that we um, provided to you, um, and a rough measurement of that shows that that is 104 feet from that billboard that's just three um, buildings down. So unless the hearing officer has any further questions, um, I shall uh, conclude for now. Thank you. I do have questions. I've only highlighted four of them here. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this issue? Joel, are you aware of anyone? Yes, okay. I would. I would. Couple things. We're, well, we're first, happy. We're first, gonna... we want to find out who you are. Okay, Stewie Reagan speaking. All right, thank you. Okay. And and we are happy to provide uh, the permit that Samantha references from back in 2000. The history of that was that we built the one sign, or we applied for the one sign. Uh, we ran into issues on construction, and our uh, the time to build it ran out, so we had to apply for another one. And um, we pro we have those permits in our file, both of them. We're, we're happy to provide those. And then with regards to the last thing she said on the sign uh, that she pointed to next door, that has not been permitted as uh, by, by Salt Lake City as a billboard. We've researched it. The property owner is using that sign as a billboard illegally. And quite frankly, I don't know why the city hasn't started an enforcement action against them. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I just want to mention and mention on the record that I did receive two email communications that were uh, sent. One of these is from Jason Bowe, B-O-E, and the other is from Chris Demiri. And I maybe have mispronounced everything there was to mispronounce there, but um, I just wanted to make sure the record showed those had been entered. Okay, any uh, that uh, would conclude the public comment section. Although Mr. Reagan, since you're a principal here, if you have other comments uh, with your attorney, we want to make sure we get the whole story. And so I would, I would like sure, an opportunity please. to just respond to a couple points. But it, it, Absolutely. Or do you want me to wait till you've asked your oh. questions? Or? Well, your choice. If you want to respond, then maybe I'll answer the questions before I ask them. <laughs> okay. But, Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll do, I just have a couple of points. Um, first of all, it's I think it's a little bit. Un 
the city is now, I mean, when, when Ms. Slark put up the, the California Road or California Avenue in Redwood, it sounded like the city saying, well, we don't know what those permits are. Well, if you look at what her notes said, it said the first one was voided because both billboards were going to have Redwood Road frontage. And that wasn't permissible. So what happened to the note she just showed, if she wants to put it back up, is it was voided and the one billboard was moved around the corner to have California Avenue frontage. And that met the spacing requirements. So no, the city's not being consistent in their position. Back then, which it's the same ordinance that was in effect, what they did is they said, you can't have them both on Redwood Road. You need to move one around the corner. And to, I can show the billboard or the permit that was issued. I, I mean, it sounds like the city's saying they can't find that permit, but I will. Um, it's, it's it's the one five seven three three two. It's it's here. It's uh, the billboard for thirteen sixty South Redwood Road, and it was issued on December first, two thousand. So the permit didn't include a site plan or some. Drawing that showed where the billboard, each of the billboards was to be located. Yep. Just give me one second. Sure. Well, here's what I can show you. <laughs> okay. Here's the site plan. Uh, can you see this? And then, so here's where it says, so this is California, but the notation is here, this handwriting, I don't know if you can read it, it says maintain 800 feet from billboard signs on Redwood Road, 15 foot setback required. And if, if you recall, this was issued, um, A, a, a more than a year prior, so that that sign was already there, and so. so Although the aerial photographs that we saw from the city, taken in uh, 2000, 2002, something like that, showed neither billboard. I think they, they she indicated that they didn't show the billboard on Redwood Road. So in your site plan drawing to the left is Redwood Road. That's correct. And running and this through this, it's upside down. So um, California is actually at the bottom. I don't think California, well, California is not really on here, but this is to meet the spacing requirements that was referenced. This says next billboard, and this here shows it's 840 feet away. I see. So there was a, there was an attempt to show a measurement, and it shows uh, that the city or that whoever wrote that on there calculated it based on the distance between the two boards on the same side of Redwood Road. On the same side of Redwood Road, that's correct. And if we look at the building permit for California. Um, Because if, if so, I admit it's a, it's a little bit confusing, and the reason because the Redwood Road one had actually been applied for first, but as Mr. Reagan indicated, the time ran out to build that, so they had to resubmit it. So at the time the one was issued for California, Redwood Road permit had been put in, but not built yet, and so that's why it says on here, void this other one at applicant's request because we couldn't have more multiple ones on Redwood to meet the spacing requirement for this location. Two billboards on this lot, this sign will have California road frontage. And so the city knew there was one on Redwood going up. And to meet the spacing requirement, we had to move it, uh, this billboard um, onto California Avenue. And if you look at Ms. Slark's notes, I, that's consistent with that. And I do, it, it, it was 20 years ago, but her notes show that we couldn't have two on Redwood road space like that, which is what, why we got this permit for California Avenue. 
to the city is program. There any, is there any dispute um, that the code was the same in 1999, 2000 as it is now? I don't think so. I think this ordinance was enacted yeah. in about 1996. If that's correct, Mr. Reagan would know for certain. I can ask him. Yeah, it, uh, it was passed in um, 1993, and it's the same ordinance today that was in effect then. Okay. It's had some amendments, but I would agree that the spacing provision um, that we're fighting about is is the same. Like, there's no material difference in that. Other amendments have been made a lot. Thank you. And I, I just want to make just a couple more brief points. Um, the first of which is that it's I mean, the, 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 this California case keeps getting brought up. We haven't relied heavily on the California case. I included it as it's instructive, I think, to show how these ordinances should be interpreted. Interpreted. What we've relied heavily on is the plain language of the statute and the way that the city has chosen to word it. Council said that we have to look and omissions have to be given effect, and I agree. And what the city ordinance says is if you're talking about two small signs, it's a linear measurement. That's in the ordinance. But if you're talking about a small sign versus a large sign, it's a different spacing requirement for signs on the same side of the street. And council says, well, we haven't told them how they could have worded it. Well, first of all, that's not our job. It's not our job to tell the city how to word their ordinances. The city drafts the ordinances and our job is to comply with them, which we've done. But if they did want to make it a linear measurement, they state that the stated goal of the city is to avoid clusters of billboards. It's a simple remedy. They just say you can't have any other billboards within X linear feet of another billboard. It's, it's, it's not a difficult drafting. But they chose not to do that. It's not a linear measurement between a small and a large billboard. It's a measurement of 800 feet on the same side of the street. And the way they're trying to twist that to make it everything north of 1700 South, just it, it's not consistent with their past applications, or their, and it's also not consistent with their stated goal. As I pointed out earlier, we could have we could put a permit, we could put a billboard directly across the street, 50 feet away, and it would be acceptable under their interpretation. And that's so that, that's not consistent with their stated goal of, of preventing clusters of billboards. Um, and, and moreover, the. It, as council pointed out, um, there's nothing in this ordinance that says you can't have two billboards that are visible at the same time. The state statute says that. If the city wanted to prevent billboards from being visible at the same time, again, it could have put that in the ordinance. And that omission means something. They didn't say you can't build on a different street with a different orientation because you can potentially see both of them at the same time. I don't want to go back to what I said at the beginning, where billboards are oriented to attract attention to a certain direction of traffic. My client could never sell advertising on an east-west billboard on 1700 South to an advertiser who wants to advertise to traffic on State Street. Simply because as you're driving past a business, you might be able to crane your neck and look down a street and see another billboard. That's not how the industry works. And that's not how, what these ordinances are drafted um, to control. So. Um, and lastly, and I think this is really important, is this is a zoning ordinance. And the law is that zoning ordinances are derogation of a property owner's rights. And they have to be strictly construed against the city and liberally construed in favor of the property owner because they are taking away property rights. So I think that I've I, I probably over explained our position on this, and I think I've probably over explained how the only way to get to adopt the city's interpretation is to read the phrase same side of the street out of the ordinance and read a linear restriction into the ordinance, neither of which is permissible under the rules of statutory interpretation. We go by what does this mean uh, by its plain language? And I don't think anybody can disagree that when we talk about things that are on the same side of the street, the common and, and the common understood usage of that phrase is things that are on the same side of the street. We don't talk about things that are just simply oriented on some side of the street, regardless of how far they are away from 
um, a particular street. So uh, I, if I haven't answered your questions, I'm happy to do them now, to do that now. Okay. Thank you. May so, I address a couple of those points? Um, certainly, go ahead. Um, so with regard to the drafting question, I mean, I didn't make the point so uh, clear enough when I was making the argument, but the city can't simply say it can't be within 300 or within 800 feet of the an existing billboard because that would include billboards on the opposite side of the street, which is clearly the intent of this ordinance and whether that was um, a negotiation with the billboard industry to allow billboards on the opposite side of the street, I don't know, but that was the clear intent of the ordinance. And um, the billboard ordinance is actually currently going under amendment and as referenced in our briefing, that provision has been changed to attempt to address this um, confusion. It says it, it provides the linear feet measurement and then accepts the opposite side of the street. Maybe we'll be back here some other day to argue about what opposite side of the street is. But I think that sort of demonstrates the point that the idea was you can't have clusters in the same direction on the same side of the street, and it was a directional as opposed to on the same side of the same street. Um, and again, I have yet to hear um, a suggestion from anybody that could possibly capture the intent in any other words. Um, the argument that um, I'm hearing today and uh, heard in sort of the amended um, appeal brief is slightly different from the position that was originally taken. It seems that, and I can be corrected if this is wrong, that I'm hearing Reagan say that, uh, Council for Reagan say that they agree that the 300 feet measurement is a linear measurement and you can't have a billboard within three, a small billboard within 300 linear feet of another small billboard. But you can put, um, Within, but you can within, um, but it doesn't apply to the large billboard. But that seems to give rise to an absurd result. You have a large billboard and you have a small billboard closer to a large billboard. Doesn't that give rise to larger clusters? That doesn't doesn't seem to make sense to make the distinction between those in that way. That seems to be contrary to the very purpose of, you know, not having clusters of billboards, having clear views and gateways. If you can allow a small billboard to be near a big billboard, nearer to a big billboard than it can be to another small billboard. That doesn't that doesn't make much sense to me. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, I just would like to point out that um, I don't think I fully understand the explanation with regard to this um, inconsistent position, which um, is being argued that the city. We're talking back 20 years ago, and again, I'd like to point out if that's the one example of an inconsistent position, I don't think that it really shows a pattern of the city permitting billboards in this circumstance. But I would like, but I think I understood the explanation to be that they asked for two billboards on Redwood Road, and they weren't allowed to have two billboards beside each other on Redwood Road, so they took one around the corner. And um, obviously, like no billboard was appears from the photos, no billboard was built there for a long time, and then when one finally was, it was two right beside each other. So, um, and again, this side has never been inspected for conformance. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure I fully follow um, that explanation. It doesn't sound like one of the billboards was in fact removed from Redwood Road. Um, uh, unless the hearing officer has any other specific questions, uh, those were the only responses which I, I had to uh, Reagan's additional comments. Well, tell me just a minute what your thoughts are on the tattoo billboard. Oh, then is it the, the legality it, or the illegality? Somehow it doesn't count because it's it's not there. It's really not legally there. I, I don't agree with that position at all. Um, a, a billboard is there, a billboard's there. So if Reagan has beef with uh, another person, I mean, we see plenty of litigation reported in like, <coughs> et cetera, like billboard owners fight with each other over these things. Uh, Reagan can have a battle well, with that billboard owner if he thinks that they're inappropriately there. Well, let me, let me make sure I'm clear. So the council saying it's our duty to enforce the city's ordinances to have, I mean, well, that, the fact that somebody else put up an illegal billboard has no bearing on the fact that we're legally, that we have legal billboards that are permitted and are, within our rights under the ordinance is to say that because somebody else put up an illegal billboard that somehow impacts our rights and it's not the city's job to enforce that. And it's our job to 
to commence litigation to have it deemed an illegal billboard. That's that's not accurate. It's not. So, our I, would, so I would say that um, it's obviously Reagan's position that it's an illegal billboard. I'm not sure that we have um, evidence that would support that. Um, we have it on our inventory as a billboard, so it appears to be a billboard. So I don't know what what's the basis for Reagan's position that it's an illegal billboard. Um, so that would be the beginning premise. And yes, we don't just ignore a billboard that's sitting there. Um, and we can't just wave the fact that another billboard is there. Okay. So it seems like that's a little off uh, topic, although it is uh, to be noted for the for Reagan that the city's saying that if you succeed here, you still can't build a billboard. Tell me, um, so we, we've agreed that the way the language in the ordinance reads, small billboards can't be within 300 feet of each other, no matter what, across the street, across the property, it, it simply, the 300 feet doesn't take into account what side of the street or where it's located. Those two billboards couldn't be closer than 300 feet. Is that true, Mr. Peterman? Well, I mean, the, I think the ordinance says they, they use the word linear feet with regard to small billboards versus small billboards. That term linear feet is omitted with regard to small billboards versus large billboards. So I, I think I agree with, assuming I understand your question, yes, I agree with it. So if, um, let's say we want, we can build a large billboard that it's 1600 feet, you know, it's 1600 feet or 1700 between two existing billboards, and we want to put a new one in. Your position is, of course, you could build that large billboard in that area between, that neither one is closer within 600, 800 feet of the other large billboard. But if, if the street orientation doesn't matter, then on the same lot, you could build another large billboard facing a different direction. They could almost touch each other like a- No, because there's a different ordinance when you're talking about large billboards versus large billboards. That's an entirely different ordinance. I see. That one, um, let me read that for you. So when we're dealing with large billboards, it says, bill so the large billboard and large billboard is a strictly or linear measurement. It says billboards with an advertising face greater than 300 square feet shall not be located closer than 800 linear feet from any other billboard, small or large, on the same side of the street. So that is a strictly, that is a linear measurement um, that applies to everything if you're building a large billboard. So it's a different ordinance that doesn't apply to this, to this matter. But you just quoted the same language as we're considering. In other words, it's on the same side of the street. It's not. Um, it's 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 subsection three of twenty one A forty six one sixty G. How far apart is the large billboard and the proposed small one? In this case. Um. A couple hundred feet. Um, um, maybe well, the city, I think the city said, I think it's about, it's less than 300 feet. I think it's 125. The 125 foot number seems to ring a bell. Is that in the, if that's in, we could do the measurement. That's what's uh, in the email from Patterson to Guy Lawson. That's where I'm getting. But I do know it's less than 300. So, I the, the case that continues to be in my mind is called Peterson versus South Salt Lake City, and this is Utah Supreme Court, 20 or 30 years ago, and it had to do with the. It was called a, I forget it was called, a, I won't even admit I would know. It's an adult club. I was in South Salt Lake, and it was less than a certain distance from another adult club in South Salt Lake. And the argument that the city of South Salt Lake was making 
is that they were too close to each other because the properties themselves were too close. If you went from the property line, I'm not sure who's interfering with the noise. It might be you, Mr. Patterson. Maybe it's me. <laughs> I quit talking and the noise went away. Um, anyway, um, Justice Zimmerman in the Supreme Court wrote that it, the cities, there was no history in that case of the cities interpreting the ordinance. And so the court interpreted in favor of the property owner saying that it was building to building measurement, not corner property to corner property measurement, because the things they were trying to regulate occurred in the building and not in, in the parking lot. Um, and I don't know what relevance that is, but it does, it does raise the uh, significance of a prior interpretation of the same ordinance. And I guess it might be what you're saying, Mr. Peterman, is the city knowingly and intentionally allowed two billboards one on Redwood Road and one on California Avenue under the same ordinance, interpreting it to mean that the language on the same side of the street re related only to uh, billboards that were on the same side of the same street. And that since one was on California Avenue and one was on Redwood Road, that they were allowed because they the city interpreted the two billboard locations to uh, comply with the statute, even though they're actually on the same parcel of ground. Were both of those billboards large? Were both of them small? Or was one small and one large? Do you know? I can find out. Okay. It may be that Mr. Reagan would know. If ever, he'd know right now what size his signs are. Uh, we can. I don't. As I sit here, uh, it's a good question. I, I don't. But certainly, can find out easily enough. Well, and I, I think what well, it's certainly not two small signs. So, I think I can say that with some certainty. So we're not we're we're not talking about the 300 foot spacing. We're talking about the 800 foot spacing, and we've shown the diagram that shows they're 343 feet apart. So they're I think I think regardless of whether or not they're both large or one's large and one's small, it doesn't matter. They they both fall within that 800 spacing requirement, and the city permitted them at 343 feet. And and your your understanding is it was deliberate, intentional, and a proper interpretation of the ordinance. Well, I think it's clear from the issuance of that that what's written on the face of the permit, they recognize that there's two billboards on this lot. This sign has California Avenue frontage. That that's what the city said. They recognize there's we have one, we have Redwood, we have California, different frontages. It meets the spacing requirement. So it's not just my argument. It's it's typed on the front of the permit that the city issued. And Ms. Stark, if I can, uh, if I can try to say what I think you said about this, it, it may have been a mistake. It may not have been intentional, and it may not even be final because no one ever inspected the billboards to uh, approve the location. Yeah, all of those, all of those were comments um, which we made. Um, we haven't really seen. I mean, a documentation, and because it's so old, you can't verify what the documentation is because it's 20 years ago. And if I might indulge, I wouldn't mind sharing my screen again because I didn't read the um, language on the face of those uh, permit issues the same way as um, Mr. Peterman did. So I might just like to pull those up again just for a moment. Um, Because it seems a perfectly valid interpretation that you have this September 15, 1999, new billboard construction with street frontage on Redwood Road, two billboards on same lot. So they're asking to build two billboards on Redwood Road. Um, and then the next one says billboard sign permit to be voided at applicant's request to meet the spacing for this location. 
two billboards in this lot, this sign has California Avenue frontage. So I understand that with the fact that this 915-99 application for these billboards has been completely voided, that they voided that application to allow their California Avenue fronted, that the California Avenue application to move forward. Of course, like we're all operating from documents that are 21 years old. And again, if that's the only example we've got where it's incredibly vague um, what actually <laughs> happened, then I don't think that that's a pattern and practice of the city interpreting its ordinance. And it seems to me that this interpretation from September 15 of 1999 is exactly the same interpretation that's happening today. It's like you can't have these Redwood Road billboards because you want this California Avenue one. So they said, okay, avoid the, California, the Redwood Roads and we'll take the California Avenue. So that appears to be what's happening there in September 15. Um, what happened in December 1, 2000, I don't know, because um, it's very vague from this. And I didn't, uh, like today's the first day that I've seen those things that Mr. Peterman put up on the screen. Um, but I don't, they were far from clear to me, like if there was what was being requested and what had been done. And again, like this has never been inspected. Like, so I don't know what was literally approved. Uh, was it a small billboard? Was it a big billboard? You know, and it's obviously never been inspected at the end. So um, I don't think that this is sort of resounding evidence that the city's taken a contrary position in the past. Yeah, may, may I just may I just have one minute to address that? And to answer your earlier question, it is a large the the one on um, <clears throat> Redwood Road is a large billboard. The one on California uh, Avenue is a small billboard. Okay. Just give me one minute. Um, I just want to, I think I can address two of these points. I mean, for the city to say, well, maybe we just didn't, we didn't know about it. I mean, it's the way the city regulates billboards. That's just not believable. But I want to um, share this screen. This. So what we have here is, um, if you can see that, that's a, this is UDOT. This is that billboard on Redwood Road. That the city says may or may not be proper. Um, this is dated. 12 28 2015 you see the address 1360 with south redwood road u dot um conforming side by side permit check 12 28 i mean so it has been inspected everybody's aware of it this is a u dot inspection showing that it was inspected as recently as 12 28 2015. and i'll show you um the one more thing that I think is relevant. Uh, is and we Mr. Reagan indicated that the one had to be voided because of timing. So this is and that was 144081. So I'll share this. If you see. This was provided to the city. We wanted to extend permit 144081 for 180 days. The, the structure hadn't come in yet. We have two permits for the same property. We have built one sign, but we haven't received the other sign structure from Phoenix yet. We should have it within 45 to 60 days. Now, what happened is the city, I'll show you. Um, the, in response to that, the city said, 
Uh, in regard to your request for an extension of time from 144081, the permit's already been granted an extension. The permit's over a year old. We're refunding 80% of your permit. You can reply. You can reapply for a new permit when you're ready, which is what happened, which is what we've represented. So then we reapplied. California Avenue um, and Redwood Road were always known to the city to be two billboards on the same lot. I, I agree, and the reason there was two, two permits for the one on Redwood is because of that. Um, but initially, it was moved to California Avenue to meet the spacing requirements, as Ms. Slark's um, notes show. Well, so it does seem that the um, the city was aware that it, of course, two billboards on the same lot. That seems to be pretty straightforward. Um, tell me, and I invite both the city and the appellant to answer this. Is this is the issue we're facing tonight a uh, first thing? Is this the first time this has come up to your memory in the last 20 years since those billboards were built? Is this the 17th time the city has interpreted the ordinance this way and we just simply finally appealed it? It's, ne it's never come up. So the only other time that this, that this has been in front of the city, to the best of our knowledge, now, um, the, the billboards, so here's the thing, the billboards don't move very often. They're very hard to move. So there are numerous other locations throughout the city where there are billboards around the corner from each other, but they predate this ordinance, which is why this is the example we showed. So the only time, to the best of our knowledge, that the city has ever interpreted this ordinance is the is the is what we showed you. So it's not something that the city interpreted it our way or what we're advocating for in 2000, and 15 times since then they've interpreted it the way they're advocating for tonight. The only history we have on interpretation of this ordinance is what we've presented to you, which is that if they're on up, if they're on different streets, they're permitted. Okay, Ms. Stark. I mean, I've never um, been arguing to you on this point before. So in my seven years at the city, I'm not aware of um, a circumstance where it's been challenged by a billboard company previously. Um, I would add it would have been nice to have received some of the additional documents prior to the hearing so we could respond substantively whether we agree or disagree with how the history of this permit played out. Because um, obviously Reagan doesn't have retention schedules in the same way as we do. So it would have sure. been nice to see those. Well, it I guess uh, this would make a great law school exam question. The uh, the example is dated. It's two decades old, but it's the only experience we can um, establish tonight that the city's had with the same sort of question. And the ordinance, the, the result of the application of the ordinance apparently was different. The city, had, there are documents that appear to be genuine that uh, everybody may want to have time to look at again, where the city acknowledged in several places that these were two billboards on the same lot. It, it, you simply could not have had two billboards on the same lot on that lot that were 800 feet apart under the current interpret under the uh, interpretation of the ordinance the city is uh, imposing at this point. Um, but not only do you not have the documents, Ms. Stark, I don't either. In other words, we've seen them on the screen and nothing more. So the irony of this is that if I go down that path, no pun intended, no, uh, down that road, the, uh, that leads me to conclude that the ordinance has been interpreted only once before and the appellant is proposing this, a, a, an interpretation that's the same. And, and there's a point in the appellant's favor. On the other hand, I can't, I agree with you, Ms. Stark, that this can't have been the intent of the ordinance because if, if it's interpreted the way that the uh, appellant wants it interpreted, then large billboards can be closer to small billboards than small billboards can. And, and that doesn't seem to be consistent with the ordinance. As for the tattoo billboard, I, it's not before me and I don't know how to 
sort through that. It sounds like that would be a separate issue to be resolved between the parties anyway. But I think for if in fact the parties would like to take some time, review what happened with Redwood Road and California Avenue, make sure the documents we're looking at are authentic and and complete so we can really understand that situation. It would really help me out and may be pivotal pivotal <laughs> to how this case is resolved. What would you think about that, Ms. Start? Do you want the time to look at the at the files that you might have or look at these documents and respond to them? Um, that would be fine. Um, I mean, it would be great if uh, Mr. Peterman could provide the documents that he has. And uh, I know that we have limited documents when going back, but we could, and we've also got additional challenges because uh, folks are working remotely, but it, I would like sure. the opportunity to at least take a look at those, yes. Do you object to that, Mr. Peterman? No, I'm I, I'm happy to send them, and I can send them to you as well. Okay, that would be good. Um, and if if you have any other related documents that might be of some help, it'd be great to have those too. I'm quite impressed at how you were able to bring them up, um, but it would be. Uh, it would be fair to, to give the city a chance to respond if this was the first time they've been able to see him tonight. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to say that seems to be quite an issue as far as I'm concerned. So giving both parties a week, say, to look at them and comment on them and respond and see whether their documents may be available may be helpful to all of us. Is that a reasonable time or is that not long now? If it would be okay, I would actually request possibly 10 days. I just have a significant deadline and something else next week. Sure. So I would like, if we could just get it to you, maybe the day before Thanksgiving, I think that's where 10 days would fall. That would um, be really helpful. A Thanksgiving break, the Wednesday of that week. So save your holiday, but ruin mine. Is that what you're saying? Just give yourself, give yourself even longer once you get them. <laughs> Nobody's coming for for uh, Thanksgiving this time anyway. It's been canceled. That's almost. So, uh, tell me, Mr. Peterman, does the twenty fifth work for you? Yeah, I mean, I can. I all I have to do is hit send. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't believe you want any additional briefing from me. You just want to ensure that these documents are authentic, and I mean, I can represent that they're copies. In our records, they're stamped received by Salt Lake City. I don't know how we can authenticate them any other way, sure. but yeah. I mean, if you just want me to circulate the documents so you can see what what so you can look at what I was showing on the screen, I can do that. I don't know why we would need any more than that time. Okay. So really, the issue is to allow the city to, the chance to observe, to look at them and see if there's any context the city would like to offer. That would make the whole uh, issue of the the way in which the billboards were permitted and built may help me understand better and how it was a result of a, of your um, advocacy. Yeah, and you know, my only objection to that would be was that this permit application was provided to the city, and this argument was provided in, um, to the city with our initial briefs, which was. In July, I mean, this isn't a surprise argument, and I frankly, I don't think it. We should be extending this at all. Um, if you, if I, I'll, I'll defer to you, but I mean, we had an opportunity to present our evidence tonight, and again, it's not a surprise. It was provided in July, so I don't, I don't know why we're extending beyond tonight. I, I don't think it, that would be reciprocated if it was the other way for us to present additional argument a week after the hearing. So I would object on that basis. I think that you can assume that. I mean, that the evidence that we have is the evidence that we've presented, and I don't think there's a need for any additional time. The city certainly has access to its own records. The first time that our attention was drawn to any kind of permit in 1999 or 2000 was last week. Um, it well, was the amended uh, briefing, and that's, we that's just not that, that's just not accurate. If you look at the appeal packet, the initial appeal submitted in July, this permit this is attached to it. It doesn't matter. The, the issue for me is, I think the documents you showed, the site plan and the note from Mr. Reagan and the extension 
okay. it's helpful to me to understand what happened. And the city says they haven't seen those documents before. So I would like them to have the 10 days to see if there's some kind of context I'm missing. Okay. If you want me to consider those documents that you showed me and the city for the first time just now, is my understanding, I think it's only fair to give the city a chance to respond to them. Uh, I will I will circulate them. Okay. Uh, I just so, wanna, I just want to clarify something too, just for perspective. The decision to come to a November hearing was made by the appellant. So we could have gone earlier and decided that November was the best time for them. Um, and in the packet that we received, the permit was not included. So just to clarify that. Okay. Mm, I. It doesn't matter much. It's okay. Okay. So, well, I, I'll have to go back through it. It's anyway. Okay. So if, if the appellants would provide the city, these documents and provide them to me within a day or two. Then I will expect to get the city's response on the 25th and any thoughts that either party has about where we go from there. If they want to just. Ms. Starkey, if you just want to submit comments and we'll close the record and let me decide at that point. We can do it. Um, and Mr. Peterman, if Ms. Stark provides comments on or before the 25th and you want the chance to respond to those, I'll extend that. And if you say, no, that's, you know, we've already said what we need to say, then I can take it all under advisement and make a decision at that time. So the only thing I'm imposing at this point is that we, the city's, the city has until the 25th, no later, uh, provide some additional documents, comments on the context of these documents, then uh, you can go ahead and submit it for a decision. Unless whatever the city communicates, Mr. Peterman, within 24 hours, you'd like to respond to it. And by 24 hours, I mean, ideally, it'd be nice to know on the 25th if you plan to respond, but it wouldn't be due at that time. Does that make some sense? I think you're on mute, Josh. Josh, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. I am? Oh. Yeah. You're not now. Okay, so just to make sure I have this right. So I will circulate these um, documents tomorrow um, when I get, is that okay? Yes. And I will circulate them to you as well as the city. And then by the 25th, the city will provide comments and I have 24 hours thereafter to um, reply. And with re respect to when these doc when the and, and I'm not saying the other documents were submitted; those were shown for the first time today. I just want to make sure I didn't speak. So, but we're, okay, um, okay, I think I have it. Okay, I really I find those documents helpful. I don't want them excluded, and this gives us a chance to have those documents before me in a you know in a straight up manner. Okay, and on the 24 hours. I, I don't want to take any more time than you want to take. And so you can submit any comments if you wish any as soon as you can after the 25th, you know, but it doesn't have to be until the 30th or the 1st of December or something like that. Unless you simply, and as soon as you can submit it, then I'll go ahead and, and decide where we go from there. Yeah, and I don't think I'll need much time because it's 20 years ago and all we have are these documents. Sure. Okay, well, I appreciate the courtesies, the uh, information provided and your time and attention tonight. Um, let me adjourn the meeting and we'll uh, continue this via email exchange unless uh, after the next email exchange is decided that we, for some reason, need to get back together in some kind of uh, video conference or online meeting or hearing. Okay. So okay. that should take care of us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to turn off the recording now.